when we planted this garden, we really had no idea it was going to come this far this quickly. And um, we've been told by others who frequent this garden on a regular basis that it, uh, it quickly became an ecosystem unto itself. Like a little oasis here. It's not like Northampton is urban and is just a, like a desert of, of green. There's beautiful front yards everywhere. And I'm sure if I was a bee, I'd know where all the hot spot gardens are. But um, this place quickly attracted all kinds of pollinators, more than we possibly could have imagined. Um, chipmunks, there was a rabbit in here. I'm sure there's a rabbit in here now somewhere. It's, it's turned into a jungle, more or less. Uh, uh, plants that we really didn't think were going to make it have, have totally defied my, uh, ex my lack of expectations and are, and are booming here. Like that plant in the corner right there, that's a spikenard, that tall bushy one. And I said, oh, and the chances of that making in this in broad daylight are astronomically low. But, you know, what the hey, put it there and see what happens. And it's like, uh, it's a kingdom unto itself over there. It really likes shade, so I figured it decided to grow really big and give itself its own shade. And it's thriving. And a lot of these plants are, um, are thriving beyond our greatest expectations. So uh, I should tell you some of these right now. I wish they were more in flower, but in another week or two, it's going to be absolutely psychedelically uh, awe-inspiring. Uh, although these guys right here are pretty Dr. Seussian. Um, they're so bizarre. I love them. This is globe, globe, uh, globe onion. So the onion and the garlic family are amazing medicine. I don't have to tell you that. So every single plant in here is either the official medicine or a really, really beautiful representative of that medicine. Uh, sometimes instead of getting the wild variety, we got a cultivar. If you're up there, you might be noticing some really brilliantly red yarrow. So the best medicine always comes from the wild. But uh, sometimes the wild, it's harder to get here. If you really want to have yarrow medicine, it's booming right now all over the place. Find yourself a white variety and enjoy it immensely. These here, for the most part, are the representatives. But every once in a while, we picked one that was also extremely beautiful uh, in addition to it. So what do we have here? Echinacea is going to be ready to bloom any minute now. It's echinacea scattered all around here. Many of these plants have decided to migrate on their own, uh, not quite liking exactly where we put them and moving somewhere else and we're letting it happen. Every once in a while a few volunteers come in and we're saying, okay you pass your medicine and you're beautiful so we'll let you hang. Uh, hyssop, purple right next to you. Blue vervain. Yes? Better blue vervains. No, hard to find them. This is a beautiful plant. In another few weeks, it's going to be putting up a purple spike, not quite a blue spike. Valuable nervous system, mind medicine, female reproductive medicine par excellence. Um, Solomon seal. Uh, very, it's, it's the true Solomon seal. It might be a cultivar, meaning that it is designed to be also beautiful in your garden. But the root of that plant is in my estimation the most valuable joint repairing and joint strengthening medicine we have. Maybe on the planet. It's true Solomon seal. Its root actually looks like uh, bones and they meet at joints and oftentimes change directions. So if you're familiar with the phrase doctrine of signatures, it's uh, looking at a plant and seeing patterns within it that help you understand how it might be useful for human health. Uh, it doesn't mean that, oh, if it looks like the organ, then that's what it's for, although sometimes that's true. Like strawberries are really good heart medicine, and they look an awful lot like a heart. Um, anyway, a little tangent. This right in front of it is Epimedium, a beautiful ground cover. Um, its other name, though, is Horny Goatweed. So it's a very, very uh, valuable medicine in Chinese medicine. Um, yes, it's an aphrodisiac. 
Uh, yes, it's uh, used uh, extensively in Asian countries for ED, erectile dysfunction. But it also does side things like it protects and regenerates your brain. It helps to rebuild bone. It helps to fill low vitality in anyone, not just men, so that you can feel. It's, it's considered an anti-aging plant in Chinese medicine. So, and it's beautiful, more so even in the leaf than in the flower. And it's a horticultural favorite for people who want their deeper shade area to have some beauty in it. Uh, over there, some sentinels of ma mullen. You can see them, these tall ones. Uh, the native mullen just puts up one tall taper. These are Greek mullens. They're growing all around here. It has the same medicine in it. Great pollinator attractors. A medicine chest. The flowers make great oil for ear aches. The leaf is one of the best lung tonics I know of on the planet. And the root is amazing. Uh, um, medicine for building the prostate so elderly men take note and also it is a nerve repair and an analgesic for nerve damage especially in the face and in the chest so this one plant is a medicine chest uh, that other tall one by the statue is gravel root or Joe pieweed this is where the plant actually is letting you know what it does by its name gravel as in urinary gravel. It's medicine that you would take if you had cloudy urine all the way up to kidney stones. Uh, all of these plants we chose look beautiful when they flower and also they can grow around here. They do grow around here. Um, we decided not to make it uh, exclusively native or exclusively one thing or another. The only stipulation would be that this one was exclusively medicine. Uh, there might be other gardens with themes down the road where we decide just natives or um, really heavy on pollinator attractors. It depends on what we are what we are approaching and how we're convening around it and what the desire of the people and the parties involved in it want. Um, I could go on. We put in these trees. These are service berries. Um, they put out edible fruit. They, we also wanted to create some shade in our garden so we could plant shade loving things under them. So first we had to plant the trees and there's golden seal underneath, or will be, right? Yeah. But in the meantime, these service berries, Owen came up to me and he said, can we, uh, can we actually make service berry work as a medicinal? And I said, yeah. Let's just pull out a Native American book and look at it. And sure enough, right down the line, every tradition that had this plant growing used it as a basic superfood to help strengthen, to help bring vitality back. And you might think, well, that doesn't qualify as medicine, but if you look in the Chinese Materia Medica, they have dozens and dozens of medicines and fruits that they put in the Materia Medica saying they are here because when used in a particular way, they actually are great for bringing back people from emaciation and malnourishment and a host of other things. So, yeah. Did you guys plant the oak tree? No, that's the one we did not plant. That would have been hard to get it that big in two and a half years. <laughs> or a really big backhoe, one or the other. <clears throat> and this is a representative. I wouldn't use this particular oak for the medicine, but oak bark is really valuable medicine for uh, addressing diarrhea, uh, like out of control diarrhea. You have to stop it, you have to stop it now. Uh, grabbing oak bark, oak leaves even, acorns and crushing them up. They're incredibly astringent and can stop diarrhea really quickly. Also the oak bark, very strengthening to teeth and gums. Uh, powerful medicine. Um, what else? Prickly pear cactus, another one that I wasn't sure was going to grow around here, but there it is, loving it. And you've seen prickly pear cactus maybe even in supermarkets but it's mucilaginous, it's used sometimes uh, similarly to aloe, and it's also used to help balance blood sugar, so it's in hypoglycemia and um, diabetes protocols, and it also is a cardiotonic, and the list goes on. Oh yeah, here's another. This one right here is balloon flower. It's gonna be absolutely stunningly beautiful, come out with these purple flowers that are enclosed like balloons, and then 
finally open up and look like old Victrola speakers. And here in America, we think of it and know of it as a, a horticultural beauty. But this is also major medicine in China. The root is a preeminent lung tonic and also helps to clear congestion out of the lungs. I use it very often in combination with mullein. Plants don't care that they're from other countries. They, they'll work together. If plants naturally grow together in the same ecosystem, in the same habitat, those plants have a very powerful relationship with one another. The medicine of those working in concert is probably more powerful, but it's not exclusive. It's not like their medicine becomes null and void if you mix it with something else. So plants are global, like we are. There's oregano down on that side. There's a few mints. There's a calla mint that is incredibly long-lived in the flowers. So the flowers will go for months and just you think it's just bloomed and it just keeps on going and going and, and the bees absolutely adore this plant. Um, there's a fern over there that's a special variety called royal fern that is a powerful back strengthening medicine. Um, helps to uh, remineralize people with bone deficiency, especially in the back. Um, spikenard, that big bushy mon monster back there that I thought was never going to make it, the root of that medicine is, uh, well, it's, it's a cousin. It's a second cousin to ginseng. So the root has a very, very diverse and varied medicine, like ginseng but it's uh, more governed and geared towards female reproductive health and the movement of chi and blood through the body. <clears throat> but it's also an adaptogen. I'm not sure, does anybody not know what the word adaptogen means? See, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I would have had to ask the question the other set way and say how many people do know what adaptogens are and only two people would have raised their hand. So that's progress. Now only a couple of people need to know because it's becoming that popular in our own vernacular. Um, adaptogenic plants and mushrooms are basically the brainchild of China maybe 2,000 years ago. And they discovered or helped to co-cultivate and, and slowly hybridize these plants, not hybridize, but cultivate them so that their medicines became stronger and stronger and have given to us really powerful, deep, nutritive, immune strengthening and balancing, endocrine strengthening and balancing, nervous system strengthening and balancing. Like everything that we need as a culture right now, living the way we're living with the stress and asking us to do too much, these medicines are um, extremely uh, important for us. And uh, adaptogens are of many varieties. I don't even, how did I get on that topic? What was I talking about? Do you remember? Oh yeah, spike nard. <laughs> spike nard is cousin to ginseng, and ginseng is considered king of the adaptogens. Chinese ginseng by the Chinese is considered king of the adaptogens. The word adaptogen didn't exist in Native American jargon, but for the Cherokee, American ginseng is chief of the medicine society for healing the body. No matter where you go, ginseng is considered it spurs a fever in people almost as strong as gold. I don't know of too many things in the world that make people just suddenly make their eyes go wild and even if they never heard of it, suddenly they want to know all about it and ginseng's one of those plants, one of those things. And, but it's a big family and spikenard's one of them and it has medicine in it that's similar. Growing in our, in our forest, we have wild sarsaparilla, which is another cousin of ginseng, and that has a milder form of it. So, um, yeah, just wanted to showcase some of these. Sitting right next to you with the beautiful yellow flowers is foxglove. We decided to put medicines in of all kinds, including some that would be considered toxic. And I know that this garden is not for picking and taking and using because it's kind of a little bit too close to all kinds of fossil fuel emissions, making it something that would not be ideal. Uh, although these plants are really, really healthy if you could find them in the wild. So as part of an educational experience, I wanted to get across that 
sometimes the medicine is in the dose. <clears throat> and a, a medicine in a, a plant in a very small dose can save your life when you take it in a little bit more than that very small dose, then it will kill you. And foxglove is one of these plants. It's what we get digitalis from, or uh, the medicine that is uh, one of the preeminent heart medicines uh, that has extremely small range of use, a little bit too much, and you're, you're not here anymore, you're gone. So foxglove has been used for centuries for helping with heart disease, and then it was discovered by the pharmaceutical industry and they, they bent it into a drug. So this is our way of teaching that the dose is in the medicine. You know, take garlic for example. Uh, a little bit is wonderfully tasting. That's food. Taken in a larger amount and it can act like medicine and eliminate parasites and bacteria from you. And if you eat too many cloves on an empty stomach, most of us will probably puke. And when the body pukes, it means it doesn't like it, which means that garlic has just lifted up into the toxic level. So here's a plant that's a food on one level, medicine on another, toxin on another, just to show you the doses in the medicine.